if I'm scrolling on my phone or I'm watching something on TV, like it's not very satisfying. It passes time, it helps me move from one stage to another, but I, I don't necessarily feel better or happier on the other end of it. So instead of seeking external stimulation every time that our internal worlds are feeling bored, maybe tap into something that would be more mentally stimulating and actually let that boredom fuel something in us instead of looking to pacify it externally so quickly. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Catherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, welcome back. I am so excited to have you here today. I am talking today about the value of daydreaming because I am a daydreamer and that's something that's been such a consistent part of my life for the entirety of my life, but it actually has impacted my work and my business in a lot of different ways. And I think that there's a lot of merit and value to be found in the act of daydreaming, especially in and how that filters or spills out into the work lives that we have, especially if you're an entrepreneur or someone that is in more of a creative field, you may feel like you more deeply resonate with the themes that I'm talking about today, but my hope is that they also will encourage or inspire people who maybe aren't in either one of those camps to dip their toes into the water and to venture in more fully. That's kind of the gist of what we're doing. Hi, I'm so glad that you're here. Excited to have you part of our little YouTube community. Side note on that, I've been trying to think if there's a name that we can call ourselves. So our team here at Shazen S, we call ourselves Team Tree Forks because of our logo. That feels a little, like that's exclusive to our team and people who work for the restaurant, but it would be fun to have some sort of name to call our YouTube community. It's been fun to see it grow. So if you have any suggestions for that, you can drop those in the comments below. So for today, what we're going to be talking about specifically are how do we encourage more daydreaming in our lives? And then two, how has daydreaming specifically impacted me and my work? And what are the threads between daydreaming and starting a business that employs people with disabilities? That's what we're gonna dive into. Let's go. All right, I want you, before I go into my own experience, to take just a moment to reflect and think about when do you first remember daydreaming? What was that like for you? That oftentimes starts in childhood. There's maybe a particular setting or scene or environment that you associate with daydreaming in your life. So I want you to like pause, think about that. What does that feel like? And then for me, I have very specific memories of getting lost in my own daydreams. (laughs) Oftentimes it can be an escape, right? And I think that's where sometimes daydreaming can get a bad reputation because we're using it to escape from maybe the life or the world that we're currently in. If we're practicing trying to be present, then how do we be present daydreamers? I'm trying to figure out that balance here for myself, but there are some strong links, I think, between daydreaming and imagination. There are so many benefits and I'm not gonna go into all of that here because I don't actually have the credentials to do that. This is my opinion. I'm not researched on psychology and the brain and all of the the health benefits of imagination or the psychological benefits of that. But that activity, that momentum in our brain, the ability to create, to come up with, to dream of, and then oftentimes take and this is what we want to talk about today, taking some of those dreams outside of our brains and actually bringing them into the world. For me, as a kid, I've always been pretty introspective. I've been someone who's very observant, who oftentimes kind of 
sat back a little bit when I was in groups or when I was in more crowded environments and really just observed and wanted to watch and see what people were doing and how they were reacting and what they were talking about, how people were feeling about things, sensitive to how people were feeling for sure, but then would internalize that, right? So there's, I, I got the feedback as a young kid for being shy or for being reserved or for just watching, for not talking a lot. My grandma telling me I'm not smiling enough. That could be a video in and of itself. What I really was doing was internalizing a lot of what was happening in my environment. And then that's making my thoughts just go, go kind of wild. But was constantly in my own world in terms of dreaming up stories and ideas, or things that I wanted to create, spending a lot of time thinking and pondering over those things. What happens sometimes when I'm reading, right? You're reading and then all of a sudden whatever story is happening here, I'm taking it somewhere else in my mind or placing myself into stories or into other ideas or worlds or playing like using my imagination a lot in terms of what play looked like with my sisters or my surroundings. So those are some examples for me. But in terms of how do we encourage that kind of daydreaming as an adult, I have a few different things for us to think about. The first one is creating spaces where our mind is actually free to wander. In order to do that, I think there needs to be some level of safety already present in terms of there's room and space and safety to actually let your mind wander and go. So you're not having to pay immediate attention to what's happening around you. A lot of times I think that can be done through and in more monotonous activities or tasks or things where you're not having to, your brain is already programmed or inclined to do it without you having to actively think about it. Like walking, sometimes when I'm on a long drive, for me, cooking, because that's something that I am very comfortable with. My mind can wander a lot when I'm cooking because I'm I'm chopping something, I'm mixing something, like I, I don't actually need to think about it. Running, sitting outside somewhere, looking out a window before bed at night, like before I fall asleep, or in the morning before I wake up. Those are moments when my body is either mostly at rest or it's engaged in an activity where my brain doesn't need to be actively involved and my mind can start to drift. And it's fun to see what my mind, how my mind fills in those gaps. Part of that is also allowing ourselves to get bored, <laughs> which is something that I used to be a lot more or at least I would say I was aware of that boredom maybe more as a kid. I grew up, this is gonna make me sound old, but my team today told me that I looked like a soccer mom. So maybe this is all fitting together. They did say I was a cool soccer mom though. I will add that caveat. That at least made me feel a little bit better about it. I didn't grow up with a lot of technology and screens. And so when I didn't have something to do, I had to find something to do on my own. There wasn't an immediate distraction. And I think that my mind honestly is still bored a lot, but I can numb it more quickly with something other than my own thoughts. So allowing myself the opportunity to actually feel bored and then what comes out of that boredom and, and what can I push into that actually fulfills and like truly scratches that boredom itch. Whereas typically if I'm scrolling on my phone or I'm watching something on TV, like it's not very satisfying. It passes time. It helps me move from one stage to another, but I, I don't necessarily feel better or happier on the other end of it. So instead of seeking external stimulation every time that our internal worlds are feeling bored, maybe tap into something that would be more mentally stimulating and actually let that boredom fuel something thing in us instead of looking to pacify it externally so quickly. And then where do our thoughts go? Where do our dreams go? Where are we finding ourselves wanting to be? What are we finding ourselves wanting to do? And that's what I would say my third point after giving yourself the time and space to let your mind wander, letting ourselves get bored and not satisfying that boredom or that wandering with something external, letting it remain internal. And then thirdly, having fun with those daydreams and not limiting ourselves. That's something as a kid, like I had wild daydream, like I had wild dreams, daydreams that I would make up for myself. Like, you know, so many dreams about like, I'm gonna find a wild horse next to my house and what's this whole story, like creating these whole storylines where it's like, that never happened. There wasn't even anything like remotely close to that 
happening in my environment would, that would suggest it was a possibility, but I spent so much time thinking about it and what that could be like for myself. And so as an adult, I feel like oftentimes when I find myself starting to daydream, it's easy to tamper it and to be like, well, that's not realistic or that would never happen. And then try to spin it into something that maybe is a little bit more plausible. So I want to encourage us to actually in those daydreaming spaces to go ahead and like dream big. We don't have to limit ourselves in that. It truly is a dream. It's something that that we're conjuring up for fun in our mind to keep ourselves company, but not limiting that scope and allowing ourselves to experience the fullness of what that dream could be in our minds gives us such specific insight into the things that really make our souls come alive and the activity or the life or the world that we want to live in. And that's where I think We're going to move from how do we daydream more in our life into how can that impact our lives and our work. For me, I'm going to give my own personal experience and journey here with how daydreaming has impacted my life and work. I started dreaming of having my own restaurant when I was in high school. I remember when that process started and kind of picturing like, what would this is? I hadn't gone to culinary school. I'd never worked in a restaurant. Like I just like to cook at home. But those dreams were already present of like, what would it look like if I actually owned my own restaurant? And then thinking through like the physicality of that, what could it look like? What kind of restaurant would I want it to be? Where would I want it to be? Like those dreams were already present. I would spend time (laughs) instead of, sorry mom, instead of doing my schoolwork, not intentionally, not like I'm setting aside my schoolwork and I'm doing something different, but like, oh, I'm supposed to be reading or I'm supposed to be doing math. Like instead I'm daydreaming about like, what am I gonna make for for lunch today? Like, what am I gonna, what's the next thing that I'm gonna create in the kitchen? Like I'm thinking of what sounds good and what would fit together and what do I already have? and like creating these recipes or these meals in my mind. Fun fact, another interesting aspect of daydreaming. I didn't know until not that long ago that most people don't taste things inside of their minds. I do. Like when I am thinking about putting food together, I can experience inside (laughs) my brain what that's going to taste like. So I'm like this mixed with this and this and oh, it needs a little bit of this and like, I can picture all of that inside. So when it goes to be time to actually cook it, that creation process has already happened a lot of times for me. And sometimes it happens in the moment too, as I'm like starting to put things together and then I'll taste something. I'm like, it's missing whatever element. And then, you know, finding out what that would be and adding it in. But so much of that is already happening just as I'm thinking about it and as I'm dreaming about it. All of those things like that has very much impacted my life and work. I own a restaurant now. I am a chef. Those facets of dreaming have very much been things that I've stepped into and pursued in my life and have watched and worked towards making those dreams become reality but they started a long time ago and they started by continuing to just like ruminate on them and to dream about them and dream about them more and then expand it and then talk about it and then try something and then that process has led me a long way in terms of exploring the creativity that was inside of my brain and recognizing that if I'm dreaming about this regularly, like if this is what I'm choosing to think about before I go to sleep at night, it's something that's deep in me. Like there's an interest there. There's a real desire there. If my escape (laughs) is to think about the restaurant that I'm going to own someday, then like there, there's something to that and actually being able to pay attention to what that theme or what that dream or what that desire may be. Another aspect of how daydreaming has impacted me is by dreaming of or imagining a world or an environment where people truly belong. And that can hit a tender spot in me because a lot of that is what would it look like for me to feel like I belong and dreaming about that, but then taking that dream and trying to think of how to make that practical for others other people to experience as well. And that's really foundational to the business model that I have and what's at the heart for me of creating an inclusive and an integrated environment for people with and without disabilities where we're working as a team together. The heart and the goal behind that is to create a space where people know that they belong and they know that they are worthy and they know that they are valued and that they are celebrated. And those are things that I desire in my own life, for my own life, and are values and really important to me to practice 
in the world and in my work. And all of that starts with these dreams of what does it feel like to belong? What does it feel like to be so loved? What does it feel like for someone to be so excited to see me? And, and taking that and then also picturing when I see injustice in the world and when I see people with disabilities being treated unfairly and not being given opportunities and not being offered jobs and being the first to be fired and all of these things, like what does it look like to do it differently? And then following those thoughts through to the point that it can be physical and practical change. And then lastly, practically speaking, daydreaming is why our space looks the way that it does <laughs> and why this business is what it is and why the concept is what it is. Like all of those were dreams. Like if this is how I want people to feel, what does it need to look like? And for us, you know, there's so many different aspects of this space that represent what I want people to feel when they are in here, which is that welcoming, that is that belonging, that is that it's time to slow down and connect and and be present and enjoy food and enjoy company and conversation and to know that you're wanted and that there's new life and opportunities and growth. And so we have plants everywhere reminding us of growth and opportunity and life and second chances. And also the fact that the environmental piece of having plants in the space is also a very, a very important reminder to me. It's like, I have a plant over here. and like, it's not doing great. It's not the plant's fault. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the plant. The plant is not doing well because of the environment that it's in. And so if I can move it from here over to here, where all of a sudden it's getting the sunlight that it wants and needs, it's getting the protection that it needs, it's getting the water that it needs, it's not drying out too fast, like all of these things. And now it's flourishing. And that reminder of so often when I get frustrated as a leader of people, with people <laughs> and what's happening or the behaviors that I'm seeing or the, the inconsistencies or the patterns and, and recognizing like the blame should never be on that person. Take a step back and think about the environment that that person is in and what environment they do, do they need to be in in order to truly flourish and, and, and be their authentic, wonderful selves. So much of this space and of the restaurant that we have is I lived in France. I wanted to bring back the feeling that I had in France to Greensboro. I wanted to take the feeling of being invited into someone's home and gathering around a table and relaxing and enjoying the food. Like, what does this need to look like? What does it need to feel like in order for that to happen? And now we have a physical space that people come into every day and they eat and we get to serve them and we get to cook recipes that I've made up in my mind. <laughs> and taste it inside of my brain. And, and not to say, like, I, I never caught the wild horse in my backyard and made it my best friend. I never married Leonardo DiCaprio and became a famous movie star celebrity wife. Like, there are many daydreams that I had that have never manifested, but there are some that have, and I think that there are more that could. And that's what I want to encourage us in, to lean into our playfulness, to explore the things that lit us up when we were children, and that we may be dismissed because that's not what adults do, but to explore the expansiveness of our minds and the dreams that we have and see what kind of beauty and change and vibrancy we can bring into our world. All right, Shajanist team, your keyword this week in honor of my first childhood crush is Titanic.